Okay, the purpose of this is to show you how to split podcasts into pieces. I'll explain what I'm doing as I go. Anyway, you do an all-in-one window, by the way. You do File, Import, Audio, Shortcut, Control-Shift-I. And I'll use the keyboard shortcut to jump to them. They start with JBS. So here are the four files I'm going to work on. And then do Open. So while they're loading, I'll explain what I'm going to do and why. This is from a podcast, what it's worth, it's John Batchelor radio show. And the way he does his show, it's a four-hour radio show, and the podcasts are almost exactly 40 minutes apiece. And he segments each of those uh, each of those hourly shows into four pieces. And as you can see right here, it narrows at this point, and this point, and this point. So there are four segments for, per 40-minute piece of audio I have. And since a lot of those pieces I'm not really interested in, especially on Wednesdays, he seems to focus on China. His show's an interview format show. I get bored with the constant talk about China, so I'll usually skip over those, and this allows me to do that. So we have all the files in one window. There's no reason to open all the files in separate windows. It's much faster and cleaner this way, and easier. So once that saves, I'll do that. Okay, now they're all loaded. In order to work on each individual line, you just click Solo, and that mutes all the other files by default. And then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to look for where it gets quiet. So I click Play. And while it's playing, see this right here? See that? I already selected it. The shortcut for that, I hit Stop, is the open bracket. Now, select everything left where the cursor is. You just go to Select open bracket left to playback position. No, I'm sorry, that's that's how I selected where to put the cursor. Rather, select track start to cursor, shift J. From now on I'll just use the keyboard to do that. But anyway, there's no keyboard shortcut for cut, but it is control, I mean shown on the menu, but we know it's control X. That second machine is cut. Go down to the bottom where it's gray and there are no files. Left click once, then over here we know paste is control V, but there we go. From now on, I'm going to go faster because I have limited time to do this. So I go back and cut the next piece. Listen. It was quiet, and I hit the open bracket the minute it gets quiet. And you can do that while it's playing. See? Now it's got a different stopping point than it did at the beginning. Shift J, control X, paste. So I'm going to move fast now. So follow along from that first time, and I'm going to go quicker. You can hear the audio there, and it'll, when it, where it gets narrowest, the audio will fall off for a split second, right there. You see, I hit the open bracket, Shift J, Control X, down to the bottom. And then this last one, since I don't need to cut it, I just left click on it and hold the left button in and drag it to the bottom, and then unselect solo. So I'm going to move fast again. And then I'm going to select right where the audio changes. I have to have solo checked. There, see, no audio. I hit open bracket when it got to where it fell off. Control X. You can hit open bracket while it's playing, and I highly recommend that's what you do. Because then you find the quiet spot in a hurry. You're singing there. It falls off right. See, it fell off for a split second, so Shift J, Control X. Now I have to move quick. And this one. There, it fell off for a split second, you see? Shift J, Control X. You can hear me hitting the keyboard as I go. And again, this last piece, we're already at the halfway point. Back at the bottom and uncheck solo. It's important to do that and then back up to here. I'm listening. And you see right up here the sound meter. I use that extensively to make it easier to find it. And I already did. Shift J, Control X, down to the bottom. So you see that little green thing at the top that moves with the music. And here's a little tougher. I believe actually the division point is right there. You can see it drops just for a split second. Here. 
You see the sound meter pulsing and then it drops. Yeah, found it. Shift J, Control X. You see I was watching that the moment it dropped off I quickly tapped the open bracket. So that's that's the technique you use. And here. This one's much easier to see. You can see it's clearly divided. So let's watch it and see the bracket. Boom. I hit the bracket right there. Shift J, Control X. Down to the bottom, paste. Again, left click, drag to the bottom. Uncheck solo. Back to the top. Check solo. And I'm cutting the last file. As it falls off. There, found it. Shift J, Control X. And the bottom, paste. There. See so it falls off. Right there. Hit open bracket. There. Found it. And stop. Shift J. Control X. Paste. And after this is done, I'm done splitting these. I'm going to quickly fit all this in the window so I can work them all at the same time. And I'm going to rename them. There. That's the last division. Shift J. Control X. Paste. And whoops, that didn't work. Try that again. There. No, that's not what I wanted either. That's what I wanted. Okay, I had to undo it with Control Z. Anyway, left click, drag to the bottom, uncheck solo. And I want to uncheck everything, unselect everything, so the shortcut for that is Control Shift A, as you can see right here, select none. And then I'm going to fit everything vertically. This shortcut for that is Control Shift F right here. I'm going to fit everything in the window lengthwise. Fit in window. So now you can see the relative lengths. I'm going to rename them. And you used to do that by right here. See the file name? The name. By the way, the shortcut for that is you click that and then hit the letter A. And you can see the file name right there. So I'm going to name them with a four moving upward through one that way. So you see this one will have a three. And I'm just using the keyboard to go fast because I have limited time. Two, one. I had to fix that so it looked right. There we go. And then this will be a C dash four, C dash three, C dash Two, C dash one. Now this will be a B. B dash four. See. Let's do this quickly. Oh, I didn't do it right. Try it again. Three. B dash two. B dash one. And then this will be. A dash four, A dash three, A dash two, and A dash one. Now everything's been renamed. That view right. Okay. Now I'm going to maximize volume. And the way I do that is I use leveler and then normalize. But I made them into a uh, chain right here. So. I was playing what it goes as I do it. So I applied the chain on a maximize. You see leveler, <clears throat> the purpose of each one, what leveler does is it makes the audio much less sawtoothed. As you can see here, the audio is has, has a lot of very quiet spots and then it gets noisy in others. And I do that with uh, talk radio because it's easier to listen to that way. I wouldn't do it with um, music music you'd want the quiet spots and the loud spots you know unchanged what I do is I do change that for uh, talk shows so that I don't have to strain to listen to some parts and then have to back off on the volume for others because it gets too noisy it evens out the highs and lows so these will be looking much less sawtooth so what first thing it does is it applies leveler 
And you can do it separately, as I said, by going up here to Effect, doing Leveler, and then after Leveler finishes, you can go up to Normalize in the next step. But instead, I just put Leveler and Normalize together in one simple chain. So what it does after Leveler is it does Normalize. In a nutshell, what Le Normalize does is after it levels the volumes more or less, makes them, see now, see how they're not as sawtooth? Now that they're in this state, so that you can see some of them are louder than others because they fill up the, their channels more than others. It makes them all fill up their channels to the maximum. So what it does, it fills them, it, it maximizes the volume for each one now that they've been leveled without distortion. And you can see each file name being saved right here. Immediately after it does this process, I'm going to save them. I'm almost out of time. So first, then this, by the way, is making 16 files, and you can see the file names here. It takes just over a minute to do level and another minute to do normalize. So anyway, you can see it moving along here. In the moment it does finish, I'm going to unselect all the files so I can see them save, which I'll show you while it's auto saving, and then explain what it looks like here. So I'll unselect the moment it finishes. Boom. Okay, so again, remember the shortcut? It's unselect all, Control Shift A. And the reason I do that, I'll explain here. And you go to File, Export, Multiple, not Export 1. If you do Export 1, it'll save all the files as one mishmash. And it's inaudible. It actually plays one of one MP3 file. So anyway, you do Export Multiple and Export. You see the file name I saved right there. So I'm going to accept the default. So I'll show you quickly. Two, three, four, five. You see the track number right here. And you see the file name here. So B1, B3, B4, then it will be C1, but it'll be track 9, 10. You see the it gets to 16. I'm just going to click the OK. Okay. So now I've got to do is watch this. And the reason I like to unselect all of them is that if you have just one or two selected, it'll only save those if you do export multiple. So if I unselect them, it automatically saves them all. That's one reason to do it. The other reason is if you look right here, you can see the file name it's working on. But if you look closely here, the line, the individual file it's working on, you can see its file name is slightly grayed there. So you'll see this is, the others look you know, light gray and this is slightly darker gray and you can see physically which file it's working on so you get an idea how long it'll take to do each one and you can see the variation in length of files this one here is roughly 7 minutes 15 seconds long and then these two over here are right at the 12 minute mark here and here so you get an idea of how long it's going to do to take to do each file and we're nearly done as you can see it it moves fairly fast and technical specs about this system if you're curious it's uh it's running linux 64 it's a linux 64 system 64 bit linux 8 gigabytes of ram it's a fairly old system it's core 2 quad um cpu running at about 2.86 gigahertz i believe it is it's 2.8 something 2. Point, i think anyway and it's got 8 gigs of ram as i said so being a 64 bit os i can see the other 5 gigabytes of ram that you can't see at a 32 bit os i mean you can see 3 gigabytes at most in windows for instance but even then you have to change your startup options and you can't if you have 4 gigabytes of ram you can't really access your fourth gigabyte that's the nice thing about using a 64 bit os you have access to your full system ram however much you have i could put 16 gigabytes in this and it would still see it so that helps immensely when you're doing stuff like this. It uses a lot of memory and CPU. By the way, you can see how much CPU it's using over here. It's using 50%. So it's not even using the full capability of the CPU. And then 76% of the RAM. And as soon as this finishes, I'll show you how to close it. And the way you close it is File, then Exit. And the shortcut for Exit, by the way, is Control x So... What's it say is the last file? It'll show the file names it saved. I click OK. And then uh, I go to File and Exit, and it'll prompt me, do I want to save the project? Well, I'm not saving the project. Saving the project would be like if I got to this point and hadn't done the, the export of the files I'm doing now, and I wanted to get back to it later. But I've already saved the file, so I'm going to say no to that at the very end here. I'm almost out of time, and it's just... The very second it finishes, I'm going to exit this immediately, quickly. So anyway, as I said, it'll show the file names. I'll do OK on that, then file exit after that.
There they are saved. You can see all the file names. File exit. Say no. And we're done.